Hey everybody, it's Charlie. Time to freak out. Apparently, we're getting a whole bunch of news about Titans Young Justice Season 3 in this DC streaming service tomorrow. So the teaser implies that they're going to be revealing a whole bunch of stuff. The biggest questions I think on everyone's minds is what the price points are going to be and what all is going to come with subscriptions and where is it going to be available outside of the United States and North America. We've also got a whole bunch of new Flash War stuff that I'll break down because we learned about five new forces in the universe, including the Speed Force. So the Speed Force is part of a bunch of different forces. We learned about the other ones through Zoom's character in the events of Flash War. So if you're finding me for the first time, be sure to subscribe to get all the DC videos. As the teaser implies, we're just getting started. We're going to be talking about Titans episodes and Young Justice really, really soon. There's also a new round of that Flash Ring giveaway. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave a comment on the video. So first things first, what's going on with the DC Universe launch? I've said before, their community manager, the person that's actually going to be interacting with people on this digital platform, said that they're planning on launching it late August. But they just announced all the Comic-Con panels for the end of July. In of the DC Universe streaming TV shows that they're launching this year, the only one that's going to Comic-Con and doing a panel that we know of is going to be Young Justice Season 3. They're going to drop the Season 3 trailer. It'll be awesome. We'll all freak out about it. But people are like, well, if Titans is supposed to premiere before that and it's supposed to be their big flagship show, why aren't they doing a Comic-Con panel? Or is there something else going on? Because the actor that plays Beast Boy said that he was going to Comic-Con. He has his cosplay all figured out. And he just posted this picture of a bunch of behind the scenes pictures that he took while they were making Titans. So all these books are things that they handed out to the cast and crew in the last week. Like here's something to mark our first season. It's not meant to be final, although it does sound like they're not getting a season two. The rumor is, is that they've been backdoor renewed for season two and they'll announce something about that later this year because they haven't even launched the service yet. What I'm hoping is, is that tomorrow they'll announce what their plans are to promote the series if they don't immediately make it available. Like, hey, surprise, we're letting people sign up and pay for it now. Because in addition to Titans, Young Justice Season 3, Doom Patrol, the Swamp Thing TV show, they also have the back catalog of DC movies and DC TV shows. Like the entire Batman catalog of Batman TV shows is a good example. Batman the Animated Series, all the Justice League cartoons, it's supposed to be their Netflix for DC stuff, so of course there's going to be a bunch of legacy content from previous shows and movies on there, but they just haven't released the official list. That's also probably what we're going to learn about tomorrow. But we also get comics with that subscription, so if you know Marvel Unlimited or if you've ever used that, it's basically like a Netflix for comic books that Marvel has been doing for the last several years. But up to this point, DC has had no version of that, so this is what that's going to be. So in addition to all the movies and TV shows that you'll get with this, you'll also get comic books for the price of your subscription. We just don't know how much it's going to cost. Now, I've already done several videos about what's going on during Titans, all the Jason Todd stuff, all the Robin to Nightwing, all the plot, the terror of Trigon, Raven. The main arc of season one is supposed to be the developing of Raven's powers and her arc as you learn about Trigon. Then the progression of Dick Grayson, Robin, leaving Batman and becoming the Nightwing character. We've already seen a whole bunch of behind the scenes of Gotham. This is what their Gotham looks like. So what I'm hoping is, is that they drop a trailer really soon if they're going to be launching the service in August and they have it planned or at least announced a Comic-Con panel. I'm hoping that they're just going to slip that in like, oh, by the way, here's all this footage because there have been people that said that they saw the pilot episode months and months ago. So there have been episodes that have probably been done for a while now. They've just been sitting on them. It should go without saying, whatever they end up dropping tomorrow, I will totally do a video for it. But it's probably going to be the big info dump we've been waiting for. Like, just tell me how much it's going to cost and when I can start watching everything. Recently, the government approved the AT&T Time Warner buyout deal. So now AT&T owns Time Warner, all the Warner Brothers stuff. They renamed Warner Brothers Warner Media. So nothing's really going to change from a movie or a TV show or a comic book standpoint. It's just now they have a lot more money to play with. So it's really not that big of a deal for them to throw hundreds of millions of dollars into this DC streaming service. So I don't think they're going to be too worried about the streaming service in the first couple of years. Like they can eat losses if they need to because it does cost a lot of money to produce television shows for this. Getting into Flash War stuff. So if you guys didn't know, Flash War has been going on. We just had part three and Wally and Barry just broke the speed force or they broke the force barrier as Zoom talks about it. 
So we just found out about several new forces in addition to the Speed Force. Uh, because this big DC event is happening, they're sort of changing the way the DC universe works. The source wall that used to protect our multiverse is now just sort of a barrier that keeps out this larger space. So our multiverse is just like a bubble on the outside of this really large, dangerous thing that they're just now revealing. As they're peeling back the layers on the mythology, like here's all these really cool new aspects to the Speed Force, they have Hunter Zolomon get Wally to get Barry to help him break the Speed Force by teasing him with his children. If you remember Jai and Iris West from the Wally West comics, they've been trapped somewhere else. Wally has been remembering things since DC Rebirth, so Zoom just teases him, oh, your children are stuck in the Speed Force. If you break it, it will release them. But surprise, he was lying to him. So in the way that the Flashes manipulate the Speed Force to give them great speed, these other forces also control different aspects of the universe. The first new one he calls the Sage Force, which has more to do with controlling people's minds. Then there's something called the Strength Force, which is more about manipulating power. And you can see here he just starts ripping everything up. The sky has been torn open. So it's sort of like the Speed Force served as a barrier, keeping out these other forces. And Zoom wanted them to break that so that it would open the barrier and give them all these new powers to manipulate. So they work a lot like the Speed Force works. So arguably, new DC heroes will learn to manipulate these forces Maybe Barry Allen the Flash too, but this is just part of DC Comics deepening the mythology of the Speed Force and where the Flashes get their powers from. Josh Williamson, the writer of this title, also revealed one of the other new forces that he's going to be unrolling. It's called the Still Force, and Grodd is going to be the first one to manipulate it. So think about Still Force and Speed Force and how they sound kind of like opposites. And if Grodd has been obsessed with the Speed Force for a long time, they just did a big run where Grodd was trying to steal the Speed Force from Barry. Why that might be important... But as part of this Flash 4, it was awesome. Like, they're basically racing all over the Earth. They go past Gorilla City. They run through Amanda Waller, who then calls in the Justice League. Superman isn't fast enough to catch up. Because there's always this funny thing about, is Superman faster than the Flash? They've had all those funny races. He raced Barry Allen during the Silver Age. He raced Wally West during the Modern Age of Comics. Then right after Flash Rebirth, when the ginger Wally West came back, there was this moment where Superman is running next to him, and it's sort of them doing that moment again, like, ha ha, remember when we raced before? And Wally says, you know, all those times we raced Superman... I was actually playing it easy on you. And like even Barry here is slowly trying to catch Wally, but you remember that the Ginger Wally West was supposed to be the fastest version of the Flash. So there's just a moment here sort of honoring that. Like he's running so fast that he's getting ready to turn into pure energy as Barry tries to get him to stop before they break things. But of course they break things, but it's really just to tee up this new arc with Zoom where he manipulates all these different forces that work alongside the Speed Force. What I'm expecting is, is that that DC teaser for all the streaming service Titans Young Justice stuff is going to drop in the morning. So that will probably be my first video of the day tomorrow. I'll name a giveaway winner when I post that. We can all freak out wondering what all they're going to announce. But while you wait for everything, click here for my non-spoilery Ant-Man and the Wasp review. And click here for all my Titans and Young Justice videos. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.